Okay, so YouTube atheist logic. He's been harping on this for a few weeks now, and at first I thought it was mildly amusing and not really worth a response, but now he's come out with a video where the issue is placed front and center, so it looks like I'm going to have to address this video where I oh so callously said that atheists should be crushed like bug. You know, it, it, there are a lot of interesting th things to say about atheists, or atheism precisely because essentially at the end of the day, one values atheists. They're human beings. They're worthwhile. And, and therefore, you know, their lives actually matter. Which is very easy to lose sight of uh, uh, what, when you're in a position like I am and you're constantly debating them. You, you, you see them almost as cockroaches that need to be stamped out. <laughs> Quite honestly, no. I, I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm a bad critic because I feel no agape love for these people. I consider them pests. Yeah, now Logic dramatizes my quote by setting it against footage from the movie Hotel Rwanda about an actual genocide. In a position like I am, and you're constantly debating them, you, you see them almost as cockroaches that need to be stamped out. <laughs> okay, so there are three points to make here. A, I was describing this attitude as something that's bad and something to be avoided. B, I was not talking about literally exterminating atheists, much less literally crushing them under my heels. I was talking about shutting down moron atheists who come onto my channel with their stupid, witless, hackneyed drive-by comments. And C, I want to thank you for reminding us that there is in fact a deep history of genocide when it comes to Christians and atheists. Uh, unfortunately for you, the genocide has only gone in one direction. From the reign of terror to the Stalinist purges, it's always been a matter of atheists exterminating Christians, not once the other way around. So I want to thank you for reminding us of that and for uh, exploiting the horrors of genocide in order to score some cheap rhetorical points. All right, what next? Ugh, what the hell kind of serial killer is this guy? I mean, I can understand maybe having a cartoon avatar if you don't want to appear in front of the camera, but this guy seriously pulls a black stocking over his head every time he makes a video? What the hell is wrong with him? How about, um, this bit where they're talking about a Jacqueline Glenn video? Now, there are actually a lot of times in this hangout where they just talk shit about various people, and mostly I'm not interested in defending anyone else, since most of them can defend themselves, or they're dead, and so they don't need anyone to defend them. But this one is really short, and it's so artfully wrong that it's worth addressing. Um, in which, in the first minute, she said first that atheism is not a position, it's, it's a, merely a lack of belief, and then answered the second question with, um, well, you can't hate somebody that you, you know, that you don't think exists. And so, in, in just a moment, she then claimed that God, you know, yes. based her argument on God not existing. Yes. And uh, as you put it, she couldn't go 17 seconds without this. Just going to give my audience a second to catch up with that if they haven't. And we're good. Hey, Chris. If you lack a belief in something, that means you don't think it exists. So that argument is not based on God not existing. It's based on her not believing God exists. Somehow, you've managed to confuse somebody you don't think exists with somebody you think doesn't exist. And this is such a basic distinction that I have no idea how you even thought you had a point. You know what? I'll give you this one. Okay, so not believing in God is not the same thing as believing that God does not exist. You can have that, it doesn't mean that much to me. However, that still doesn't answer the question of why you can dislike something that you believe exists, but you can't dislike something that you believe possibly but not probably exists. I mean, after all, belief is just probabilistic in any case, right? It's all a matter of degrees. And if atheism is just a lack of belief, and you can't dislike something that you don't believe in, where does Dawkins get off calling God the most loathsome figure in all of fiction? None of it makes any sense. The same, I pointed out to one guy that, um, well, you're at least making the implicit claim that it is possible the world could exist without God. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I'm not. Okay, so, so you don't believe in God, but you don't even think it's possible that the world could exist without God. What exactly is untenable about that position? Maybe it won't be so clear to everyone right away why his statement can be perfectly sensible, so I'll explain. To establish that something is possible requires one of two things. First, having some kind of evidence of it. 
You may not know anything about how it's possible or how it works, but it's happening right there, so clearly it is possible. Of course, we have to operate on the assumption that the whole universe isn't an illusion or something, but I think considering who I'm talking to here, it's safe to assume that we can agree that that's a reasonable assumption that we can both share. Anyway, the second way is to have some kind of understanding of the relevant aspects of reality that informs you that yes, whatever we're talking about is in fact possible. That is, it's consistent with the nature of reality, even if we've never witnessed it. Now you'll often hear the assertion, God is possible, just thrown out with no support. And that immediately raises the question of, how do you know? There's more to possibility than just being able to conceive of it being possible. To say that God is possible requires more knowledge than I think these people realize. You have to have somehow discovered that the ultimate nature of reality, be it physical or otherwise, is capable of supporting such a non-physical thinking being. Your entire conception of God is off. You seem to assume that there's some prior substance that supports God. No, God is the prior substance that supports all other things. That it's possible for something, anything, to exist before and outside the universe, for lack of better terminology. Well, to go back to what you yourself said, if you can prove that something does exist, you've proven that it can exist. Now, any flavor of cosmological argument proves that something must exist outside of the universe, therefore cosmological arguments prove that things can exist outside of the universe. That an entity can exist that can conjure something, in this case an entire universe, from nothing, with, in the case of Christianity, words. Well, since we're talking about the creation of the universe itself, perhaps autistic literalism is not warranted when considering God speaking the universe into existence. Now, it is true that Christians believe the universe has no prior material cause, but that doesn't mean that we believe that the universe came from nothing. We believe that the universe has an efficient cause in God. That it's possible for a being to perceive every particle without affecting them in any way, and to physically move each and every particle with no physical mechanism, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, what information are you going to bring to bear with considering whether or not those things are possible? The laws of physics? God created the laws of physics. God is not bound by the laws of physics. This flippant assertion that God is possible asserts such an extreme depth of understanding of reality that there's no way I can accept that any human actually possesses it. And a similar problem could be seen to exist from the opposite side, that to have a compelling reason to believe that the universe is possible without God, you have to know more than we know now about what is and is not possible. Well see, the thing is, when you fail to affirm that the universe can exist without God, your only other option is that God necessarily exists. Okay, they're logical complements. God necessarily exists, the universe can exist without God. It's either one or the other, not both and not neither. So when you fail to affirm that the universe can exist without God, you are failing to affirm the only condition on which indecision about God's existence could possibly be justified. You're failing to affirm the only condition on which atheism could be anything other than willful irrationality. And by the way, Chris, there's a marginally compelling argument in there somewhere against the God doesn't exist type atheist if you're clever enough to assemble it. You can have that one for free. Next time you're gonna have to pay me, I'm not here to beef up your apologetics for you. No, there is no argument there, you're just an idiot. I mean, what would your argument even be? The mere assertion that it's impossible to make the valid claim that something is impossible? The assertion is self-refuting. The fact that you fail to see this just shows how completely inept you are in logic. Logic? Oh! By the way, that reminds me. Let's take a look at what some of your idiot fanboys had to say about myself and missing the mark in the comment section to your video. What a trooper to get online day after day committed to tweet and live stream examples of the concept of the Dunning-Kruger effect to the world. It's called Dunning-Kruger effect. The incarnation of Dunning-Kruger. The Dunning-Kruger is strong with these boys. Wouldn't it be great to have a magic Dunning-Kruger mirror that showed people how stupid they sound to the people around them? Are you noticing a trend here? It seems as if little illiterate atheism kiddies have hit upon a new do I sound smart yet buzzword. I guess cognitive dissonance was getting old hat. Cognitive dissonance. Now, for those of you who may not know, I feel the word of explanation is in order here. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias wherein people of low ability suffer from illusory superiority, mistakenly assessing their cognitive ability as greater than it is. So in light of this scientifically validated principle, it makes sense that a YouTube user whose very name suggests an adeptness at logical thinking would fail miserably at it.
In fact, the entire New Atheism movement is practically a monument to Dunn and Kruger, as their overconfidence in their own intellectual superiority is proclaimed from the names of practically everything they're associated with. Meanwhile, thought leaders like Lawrence Krauss and Thunderfoot can't even manage to formulate a logically valid syllogism. So you do not get to tell me about the Dunn and Kruger effect, do you understand? But remember, you're not talking to a God does not exist type atheist in your scenario. You're complaining about atheists who say that they just don't believe that God exists. So this guy doesn't even necessarily believe that the universe originated without a God at all. He's just not convinced that it did. So, if he's not going around claiming the universe is possible without God, that's perfectly consistent with his stated position on the God question. Just as he doesn't have to commit to a yes or no answer about whether God exists, he also doesn't have to commit to a yes or no answer about whether the universe is possible without a God. When you don't actually know something, I don't know is a perfectly valid position. As I already explained, by failing to affirm that the universe can exist without God, you are failing to affirm the only condition on which I don't know could possibly be a valid position concerning the existence of God. Now, if you say that it is possibly not the case that the universe can exist without God, your belief entails that it is possible that God exists necessarily, which in turn entails that God necessarily exists. Yes, I'm trotting out the dreaded S5 axiom of modal logic there, which in turn entails that atheism is horseshit. So I'm not going to blame anyone for not claiming to know something they don't know. I will, however, blame them for believing something that is incoherent. I will blame them for not thinking through their position. If he just feels like he doesn't have enough information and so he just avoids making ignorant claims based on information he thinks he doesn't have, that's respectable. That's what he should be doing. You should respect that if you have the slightest respect for intellectual honesty and truth itself. And yet instead you've chose to sit around talking about him like he's an idiot for it. Like he should pretend to have certain knowledge about the universe that he actually doesn't have. Is that really how you approach these questions, Chris? Like puffing yourself up and pretending to have all the answers that you don't have? Because that's what you're insisting this guy should do. You know, this is honestly unbelievable, man. You clearly can't grasp the difference between not believing something is possible and believing it's impossible. Earlier, you said that you don't understand the difference between not believing something exists and believing something doesn't exist. And so I think it's starting to realize why in this hangout you guys spend so much time complaining about lack of belief atheists. Sorry folks, this guy just kind of pads out his video with this repetitive blather. Anyway, let's get on with this. In fact, you're so demonstrably unskilled at comprehending even the most basic linguistic subtleties that it comes off like a parody. You come off like a Saturday Night Live sketch. But you're not a parody, you're not a sketch. You're just actually this incompetent. And so you end up saying insane things like what I'm about to play, where you say that you respect people more who just look around at the universe and go, CLEARLY THERE'S NO GOD HERE with no argument to back it up. I actually have a fair amount of respect for atheists who will say, you know, who will take the noetic approach and say that I look at the world and this is clearly a world that does not have a God, you know, that, that does not have a God. Anyone who will actually do that, if, if they simply say like, I don't have an argument for it, I simply look out on the world and this is what I see and I know this to be the case, I respect that. In the, now I also respect somebody who looks out in the world and says like, well, obviously there's a God in charge of this. Neither one of those is an argument in favor of it, but I respect both of those as people willing to have a position. And you know, just because you can't articulate an argument for your position doesn't make the position illegitimate. And right after that is when you say that the lack of belief atheists piss you off because they're unwilling to have a position. The lack of belief atheists piss me off because they're so unwilling to have a position. Yeah. So not only does your clear and obvious deficiency in understanding spoken English cause you to recoil at the lack of belief atheist. Well, the problem with lack of belief atheists isn't that they actually merely lack a belief in God. It's that that's what they say and they're just completely dishonest about it. Now, atheists will make all sorts of claims. Atheists will claim that belief in God is irrational. Atheists will claim that God is comparable to Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. Atheists will claim that the only reason anyone believes in God is because they were brainwashed by their parents. The only time atheism becomes a lack of belief is when atheists are asked to prove anything they say. Now, here's a hint for you. If atheism for you entails believing that theists are in any way erroneous in their thinking, atheism for you is more than merely a lack of belief. But so does your apparent lack of concern for whether someone has any reasoning at all, good or bad, to back up their position. 
No, Christopher never said that this noetic atheism or noetic theism was based on nothing. He said it's based on our immediate apprehension of the world, which is completely valid. It's the same immediate apprehension that allows us to say that we're not living in the matrix or that other minds exist. As long as our beliefs are properly qualified, and as long as we don't demand that anyone else believe as we do, there's really no issue. Incidentally, to my mind, I think the claim, there is too much suffering in the world for God to exist, is the only possible valid justification there even is for atheism. The only people you respect are those who make sweeping assertions and hold firm beliefs about the fundamental nature of reality, even if they have to do that with literally nothing to support those beliefs, not even one single lame argument. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this guy goes off on another little tear here. You know, I'm just gonna let the meerkat take this one. And even if they're completely ignorant on the subject, and so just as likely wrong as they are right. And at the same time, you ridicule the people who prefer to wait until they have solid enough reasoning for the position they settle on, so that they don't settle on positions based on nothing more than ignorance and feels. Well, everyone who's undecided about any issue at all, you heard the man. Even if you don't find your information or your arguments anywhere near good enough to support either the hard yes or the hard no position on any issue, even if the reasons you've heard for either side don't convince you at all, you should pick one for no good reason at all. Or you might risk having these mental deficients missing the mark and deflating atheism scoff at you. Oh no! Forget careful thought and reasoning, forget making decisions based on a good understanding and a solid argument, forget believing true things, forget truth in general. Believing true things is not a goal anyone should have. The only thing people should be interested in is making random decisions based on nothing. Because let's be real, of what use has good reasoning and the pursuit of truth ever been to humanity? None, right? So forget whether you're even intellectually convinced of whatever position you randomly start asserting is true. Don't worry if you have no idea if it's actually true. You need to decide right now, not just for no good reason, but for no reason at all. Come on, you coward, put that blindfold on, spin around a few times, and take that shot. Who cares if you hit the target or literally anything or anyone else? At least you were willing to take the shot. I respect that. The remix. I respect that. 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 Moving on. I still remember the, the you know, there's no evidence um, for God's... In which God, yes. Yes, which God is there no evidence for? <laughs> now, of course, in my experience, they'll all just say, all of them, there's no there's no evidence for any God. And, and just to, to sort of add into this, I actually had Eve Kanine make a meme for me, uh, which has a picture of the sun and a picture of the moon. And it says, I'm sorry, picture of the earth and a picture of the sun, saying two gods that, theoretically speaking, atheists don't believe in, the god Helios and the goddess Gaia. Yes. Maybe you should have thought that slogan through. Yes. Because I think yeah. there's some evidence for the sun and the moon. <laughs> or, and, I'm sorry. Well, the moon is a god too, but, it, you know, um, but, but, you know, and the earth, I, I kind of think there is some evidence for those gods. Chris, Helios and Gaia were more than just the sun and the earth. They had minds and personalities. That's what made them gods. If we're to say there's actual evidence for the existence of the gods, Gaia and Helios, that is what we need evidence for. Then, we could say that the sun and the earth are actually gods instead of just the mindless objects that they appear to be. Well, I would say that Helios and Gaia are the sun and the earth with the added attributes of being gods, rather than being gods with the added attributes of being the sun and the earth, but I guess it's neither here nor there, tomato tomato, but it does, however, feed into the point that I was trying to make in my hacking atheism video, but I'll just let you finish. The mere existence of the sun and the earth are not evidence that the characters made up by the Greeks actually reflect reality in any way at all. There is zero evidence that the sun and the earth really have minds and wills and personalities and had kids and that kind of thing, and that the stories from Greek mythology are actually true. There was no evidence of it when they made those stories up and there's no evidence of it now. It's like trying to tell me that if a child thinks their pet rock is alive, that's evidence of a living rock. It's complete nonsense. Uh, no, your analogy is complete nonsense because it doesn't bear upon the issue at all. But even though your objection is incredibly silly, I think I understand the point that you're ham-fistedly trying to make, which is what exactly it would mean to say that the evidence for all gods is lacking. And of course that comes down to exactly how you would define the word god. Say you visited some remote tribe and you found them worshipping a stick. You know, nothing special, just a stick. And they say, this is our god, and so you ask, oh, what does your god do? Does it speak? No, doesn't speak. Does it listen to you? No. Does it do anything at all? Control the weather, make the trees grow, move one inch a day? No. So what makes it a god? Well, nothing, it's just a stick. We call it Bob the Stick, and it's our god. Is that a god, Chris? Does that stick's existence provide evidence of Bob the Stick god? Again, you're making the same stupid mistake. We're not arguing that the existence of a thing is proof that people's beliefs about that thing must be correct. Okay, it just shows that you completely misapprehend the topic. You're almost like Dan Broadbent who idiotically thought that I was trying to argue that Kim Jong-un was God. I don't see how. I mean, if you broaden the definition out so much that it loses all meaning, all use, sure, I guess maybe you can include it, but 
why? Well, bingo. The video Hacking Atheism was intended as a reductio ad absurdum, and you've pretty much hit upon the gist of it almost in spite of yourself. The point is, if it's stupid to arbitrarily broaden the definition of God when confronted with the claim, there is no evidence for God, it's stupid to arbitrarily broaden the definition of God when confronted with a first cause argument. A first cause argument demands the existence of a timeless, transcendent, immaterial first cause, so it's stupid to ask if it proves the existence of any of the very material, very finite beings putzing around on Mount Olympus. Okay? It just all goes to show that but which God is a completely lame non-objection. But yeah, I really like that one about like, okay, so there seems to be evidence for Kim Jong-il existing. Yeah, or, well, I guess there's Kim pretty solid evidence. If, 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 if North Koreans are not atheists because they believe Kim Jong-il is a God, then uh, uh, I think there's pretty solid evidence Kim Jong-il exists. So at first I was really unsure what point you were even trying to make because my brain just refused to comprehend something this stupid. But after putting a little bit of thought into the garbled mess that you're spewing out and watching the original Hacking Atheism video that you guys are discussing right now, I think I've figured out what you're trying to say. Atheists should not believe that North Koreans who believe Kim Jong-il is a god are theists because those atheists say there's no evidence for any god, but there is evidence for Kim Jong-il's existence. And so atheists should believe that Kim Jong-il cannot be numbered among the gods that people believe in, even if people worship him as one, because otherwise they're implicitly admitting that there is a god that there's evidence for. Ha ha ha, gotcha, apparently. We are dealing with an argument put forward by atheists that because there was a cult of personality surrounding communist leaders like Kim Jong-il and Joseph Stalin, that somehow invalidates the claim that North Korea and the USSR were atheist countries. Now, I'm not concerned with any alleged superhuman abilities of either of these leaders. As far as I'm aware, they have no alleged superhuman abilities. I'm simply concerned with the atheist argument that because these leaders were worshipped as gods, that somehow means that North Korea and the USSR were religious theistic countries. If they were theistic countries, I think that the gods of these theisms would have an existence that's fairly uncontroversial. That was the point of my argument, but it flew right over your head because you're an idiot. So uh, I'll spare my audience the remainder of your ranting. I hope all of you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.